Hello everyone, welcome. I'm so glad to have this time with you tonight. Uh, this is the Ron Judd Show, and uh, for those of you that have been wondering about our little chewing gum incident last week, well, we finally got it all taken care of. Uh, we managed to find some guys that had a couple of very large trailers, and they were able to come and load the two giant wads of gum and take them away. They now have them open as a tourist attraction near Harrisburg. <laughs> now, don't laugh too hard about that because they've already made over $5,000 in entrance fees this week. <laughs> I wish I'd have thought of it. I mean, we could have done that right here. Instead, we're still doing our show as usual and making no money whatsoever. Well, yes, Mrs. Ferguson does contribute uh, some to the show, but uh, she, doesn't ex she doesn't consider the talent to be a legitimate expense. Hey, Ron. How's it going? Um, just fine, Corey. I I'm introducing the show. Oh, uh, the show's starting already? <laughs> yes, the show is starting already. Maybe you would know that if you weren't out partying all night. <laughs> you should have come out with me. I mean, I had the best time. I, I told you, I didn't have the money to go out last night. <laughs> Boy, I mean, you must have gone through yours fast. I'm still enjoying the, well, generous bonus Miss Ferguson gave me. Bonus? <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't have blown all yours at once. I'm making mine, well, I'm making it stretch. Well, I'll see you backstage, buddy. Bonus? Why would Mrs. Ferguson give Corey a bonus and not me? <laughs> well, I'll get to that later. Um, meanwhile, we're very happy tonight to have our special guest on the program. Scott J. Brown is a good friend and a very talented folk singer and songwriter. And uh, we're so happy to have him on the program, in fact, that I'm not going to wait any longer to introduce him. Here he is right now with his hit song from 1982, Columbia River Gorge, Scott J. Brown. <laughs> You know, 
know, Amanda, that bracelet is really incredible. I, I don't think I've seen you wear that before. Well, you haven't because I just bought it yesterday. Oh, well, wait a minute. How could you afford to buy something like that? Not with what you pay me, that's for sure. <laughs> I bought it using the bonus Miss Ferguson gave to me. Wait a minute. You got a bonus? Don't be so surprised. I am part of this show too, you know. Uh, I know you are. Uh, if it wasn't for me, this whole thing would just fall apart. Well, fall apart is a little Not exposed. to mention your personal issues. You can even keep your shoes tied if I wasn't there helping you. Uh, all right, all right. Look, I I'm glad you got the bonus. You deserve every bit of it. Thank you. I just want to know where mine is. Good evening, I'm Parker Fairley. And I'm Miles Fromm, and welcome to the news, as it is. Tonight's top story. A mysterious house fire has left a family of three homeless. When asked how the fire started, an officer at the scene quoted the parents as saying, We believe it was arson. However, the notion has been dismissed by the police because their only child is a daughter. Yes. And another... <laughs> what? Well, it certainly could have been their son if they don't have one. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Well, you didn't really give me enough advance notice for this scene. Well, yeah, but our son? I mean, come on, you couldn't come up with something better than that? I mean, it was witty, and I, I why, think the audience would like it. Why do I even bother with this? I mean, that's the stuff you're going to come up with when you come out here? I'm appreciating it. That would be good, wouldn't it? Can you imagine riding over the Rockies? The thing is, if you take the time to, to creep up to the top of the Rockies, it's, it's a ways, it's a few hundred miles of kind of gentle uphill. But the problem is when you get there, you want to party. But your body's kind of tired because you went up those mountains. So partying at the top isn't that smart, even though you really want to. <clears throat> We're not gonna talk too much about that, but. <clears throat> but it's so beautiful to bicycle just miles and miles. To me, it's freedom. Do you think you'd feel free if you rode a bicycle just like off to eastern Oregon or eastern Washington? Do you think? It's not everybody's idea of freedom. It's just mine, I guess. Would it be, your, would it be a sense of freedom, do you think? Uh, no? <laughs> Have to try it and find out. It is longer than 10 miles. You can go 10 miles the first day, 20 the second, and you know, kind of build up to it. But these days, at least around Portland, wow. Have you noticed that cycling has picked up a little bit? Yeah. So you're gonna have to do it, because I mean, all your friends, you're gonna be doing it, so. That's why we do things, our friends do it, so we do it, right? Is it, wait a minute. Is there a moral to this stuff? Well, the moral is bicycles are so quiet and clean and they make you healthy. And if you can find the back streets and stay away from all the traffic and stay alive, they're just plain beautiful. Oh my gosh. So <clears throat> I did when I was about your age, I was about 23. I rode across the United States. I'm not gonna tell you what year that was. It was a couple of years ago, anyway. I was 23 and rode across the US, and of course, in the process, had to go through the Rocky Mountains at Yellowstone Park. And um, it was while I was in Yellowstone Park that I, I wrote a song called The Rocky Mountain Rag. Can I have the pleasure of playing that for you? All right, Rocky Mountain Rag, here we go. are clear and the rivers flow where the grizzly bear and the big moose roam you see those mountains that cap the snow rocky mountains stand so high rocky mountains touch the sky cold water's clear in the areas pure where the big trout jump and the wild duck flies some pretty girls back in these hills feed you well and cure your just build a fire, sing a song, and count those bright stars all night long. You can fish and swim and hike all day when the sun goes down. Time to play. Roll out your tan and sleeping bag. Sing the Rocky Mountain Ray. Bye. 
Rocky mountains stand so high. Rocky mountains touch the sky. Cold water's clear and the air's pure where the big trout jump and the wild duck flies. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The Rocky Mountain Rag. Um, Beverly, I noticed you weren't around much this last week. Yeah, so I was at the coast. Oh, um, by yourself? Yes, by myself. Oh, well, that, that sounds nice. Mm -hmm. It was, I couldn't have done it unless I got the bonus, bonus from my from hand. Bonus from yeah, yeah, right. <clears throat> Can you explain to me how you got a bonus when you don't even perform on the show? She's my aunt. Why wouldn't she include me? Oh, well, that makes sense. She, she would include you. Me, no. Her, yes. Hey, tell Corey Scott's in on his joke. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Million Dollar Deal. I'm Reginald Foxhound here with our contestant, Frank. Now, Frank has had a rough start at first, but has managed to bounce his way back and win his way through the first round. Are you ready to play round two? I'm ready, Reginald. Excellent. Well, for your next question, you can choose between these two categories, automotive or music. Oh, well, I don't know too much about automotive, but I feel good about music. Let's go with music. All right, music it is. Here's your question. Margaret Ferryman wrote what minor hit in 1929 that was recorded by Margaret Fairhart exactly 20 years later in 1949? I have no idea. I mean, I, I can't even come up with a guess. Oh, I'm sorry. The correct answer is there's a rabbit in my hat, but my head stays plenty warm. <laughs> What kind of stupid question is that? Nobody could answer that question. Well, don't worry, Frank. You still have a chance to make it through round two. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Just out of curiosity, what would the automotive question have been? Oh, well, <clears throat> that question would have been, on which side of a motor vehicle are the headlights located? <laughs> nice going. Eh, eh, eh. Oh, that means we're almost out of time here. But before we go, you still have a chance to play our bonus round. <laughs> bonus round? Yes, are you ready to play? No thanks. I haven't been having any luck when it comes to bonuses lately. <laughs> well, in that case, I'm Reginald Foxhound here, and I'll see you next week on Million Dollar Deal. I'll drink with you again We laugh within the tavern all night long Think of the times our hearts were light with wine And nothing in this world could e'er go wrong Listen, you hear the bells of fortune ring they're beckoning me farther down the road My destiny is calling out to me A change is in the wind and I must go So here's to good fortune all around Here's to a life Let's raise a toast to when we meet again. Fighters in the night, the 
they may find some peace before they die. And all the sad lovers, broken hearted ones, let's toast away the teardrops from their eyes. Beautiful barmaids, we love you, everyone. We'll leave behind a dollar or a dime. Here's to the bartenders, all good mother's sons. They've heard our tales and helped us pass the time. Long live the innkeeper's house. But Lord, help the ones who get out. Let's raise a toast to when we meet again.